Hello, Melissa here. Welcome to my new tutorial. This project is designed for two skill levels, advanced and beginner level. So whether you are an accomplished artist with traditional mediums like acrylics, watercolor, oil, or pencil, but you are new to the digital medium, or if you are a beginner level artist hoping to learn a new skill in a relaxing yet fun way, this project has something for you. The way I've done this is by dividing the project into two sections, a black and white pencil sketch followed by a more forgiving painting tutorial where you get to turn the black and white pencil sketch into a colorized painting. The first section is for those who want more of a challenge. You will have the option to work on your own pencil sketch with a minimal line drawing and some basic advice to get you started. For those who want a more relaxed, more forgiving experience, you can use my finished pencil sketch and just follow the painting tutorial to color it. If you choose the easier option, feel free to watch my time lapse of the pencil drawing if you want. Otherwise, you can use the links below to jump ahead directly to the painting tutorial. Here is how you can download the images. Follow the link below to my Gumroad page. There you will find three images available. If you are choosing the more challenging option, you will need to download the simple line drawing of the dog and the resource photo. If you are choosing the easier option, you will need the finished pencil sketch of the dog, along with the resource photo. Both pencil drawings should be saved and left in your downloads folder in your Google Drive, iCloud Drive, or Dropbox folders. The reference photo can be moved into your Photos app. Do not move either of the pencil drawings to your Photos app as this will remove the transparent backgrounds. You will be opening these files directly from Sketchbook. Great! Now that you've done that, let's get started. To begin, I would like to first give you some advice about pet portraits. If you are not looking for this kind of advice, go ahead and jump ahead to the tutorial. How many of you have been asked to do a pet portrait? My guess is about 75% of you. It seems that once you tell people you're an artist or that you like to draw, the next question becomes, do you do pet portraits? The conversation may look something like this. Hey. Hey. So, uh, what is it that you do? Uh, I'm a painter. I paint things. So, you're an artist? Yeah, I guess. Cool! Do you do pet portraits? Sometimes. Yes! Uh, why? Well, my brother, his friend, my crazy aunt, my neighbor, and his co-worker all want pet portraits done. I see. Uh, what kind of pets do they have? Well, my brother has a dog. <coughs> My crazy aunt has a cat, my neighbor has a pet bird, and his co-worker has a Urukai kitty who has a pet that is not a kitty. Come, my Urukai. Uh, rat. So what about your brother's friend? Oh, him. He is a velociraptor. <coughs> and a duck. Why are you on the ground? No reason. I know I just met you, but we're friends now, right? I suppose so. Cool! That means you can do it for free. You know, for the exposure. <clears throat> hmm. I have some serious questions about your professionalism. <laughs> yes, you get all kinds of questions, even before you are sure it is something you want to do. At some point, the idea of being paid for recreating a lovely family heirloom of their beloved fuzzy butt poopsie whoopsie is just too tempting. When you decide to do a pet portrait, the matter of cost becomes the next major question. After all, what is your time and your work worth? Now, this can be a sticking point for many. It's hard to put a price on something considered a skill and art, since art is literally in the eye of the beholder. Some people will think it's a scam 
to pay $20 for something that you would consider a masterpiece. Others might expect to pay $80 to $100 for something that you wouldn't even want for free. But once you get into the $150 to $200 range, then the average person will politely change their mind or say they will think about it and then never get back to you. It is hard to find that perfect balance, and artists in general have a very hard time getting paid what they are worth. Use your experience and the amount of past work you have to show for it as a guide. The more experienced you are, the higher the skill level, the higher the price. Don't shortchange what you are worth. If you were fixing their car or working on their plumbing, or if you were a chef in their favorite restaurant, the price would be the price. Learning to draw accurately is a skill that takes time and often money to learn. A chef who went to school for culinary art would take the cost of the materials, their hourly wage, and their skill level into account. Obviously, you wouldn't expect a meal by Chef Gordon Ramsay to be the same price as a meal at your local hamburger joint, no matter how much swearing is involved. And 99% of us won't be able to rise to the level of Beeple in art sales. I still can't wrap my head around that one. But on the other end of the spectrum, your art shouldn't be priced the same as a hastily sketched still life of a vase of flowers that is mass produced and hanging in every budget motel from Fargo to Las Vegas. In essence, the work you are doing is important to them. Often it is in memory of a pet that was part of the family. There is strong emotion behind the reason they want that painting, so don't overcharge, but don't sell yourself short. So you've closed the deal, now you need some photographs. This is often what can make or break the deal. If the client can't offer up decent photos, then there is just no way you can recreate their pet. It will be a cat or a dog, but not their cat or dog. The quality of the photographs they can give you is extremely important, though there are things you can do to remedy some of this. First, get as many photos as you can. Look for good contrast and good clear color. If the fur pattern is complex, as with many animals, try to get a few close-up images that aren't too blurry. Also, ask for photos that were taken outside or near a window, if possible. Natural light is always the best, but watch out for areas that are too dark or too washed out, especially animals with white fur. If sun is shining directly on them, the white will be just a bright blob with no detail. Next is the pose. You need to see as much as you can. A 45 degree angle of their face is great. Looking directly at the camera, even better. The angle should be at the animal's eye level. If the photographer was standing over the pet and the pet is looking up at them, you won't see enough of their body and their head will appear way too big, especially in a painting. A painting does not show the context of the environment the way a photograph does. It will just look wrong. If you can't find a photo with a decent pose or the pose they want, look up the dog or cat breed in Pinterest and find professional photos of that breed. Use those to create the basic pose and then use several of the client's photos to piece together the exact fur pattern, color pattern, and shape of their pet into the pose. And finally, most important, are the eyes. Make sure you have a clear photo of their pet's eyes, including the color. Try to find one that isn't all reflections. If all else fails and the pet is still alive, see if you can take the pictures yourself or have the client try to take some new ones with the above advice in mind. Here is an example of a good clear photo. I picked this dog because I love Border Collies and I have owned two of them. I didn't use one of our photos because, well, as you can see, Zoe here doesn't really sit well for photos. This is the best one I have, but I decided not to use it because the whites are a bit too bright and the dark areas don't have enough detail. And since I wasn't looking to do my dog specifically, I decided I didn't need to chase her around to get her to cooperate for my YouTube video. Well, I hope this helps you if you decide to do some pet portraits. So with all of that in mind, let's start in the more challenging part of the project, the pencil sketch. After downloading the photo and the simple line drawing, open up Sketchbook. If it opens to a canvas, tap the menu icon in the top left corner and choose Gallery. Now tap the plus icon at the bottom. Choose New from Image and browse to the Downloads folder of your preferred cloud service. I use iCloud. Choose the simple line drawing. Once that is open in Sketchbook, bring up your dock at the bottom, tap and hold Photos, and then drag it to the preferred side of your iPad. 
Slide it over a bit so that it is only taking up one third of your screen. Now find your photo reference picture and zoom in so you can see all the detail. As you can see, the line drawing here is on a transparent background. We need to add a new layer for our drawing. Tap the plus icon above the layers panel. The new layer should be above the line drawing. I turn the brightness up on my iPad as I work, which makes the white background a little too bright. I like to change the background layer to something a little easier on the eyes. Don't worry, this will not affect the finished drawing. I'm going to choose the pure black color and use the basic pencil with the default settings. I'll keep the opacity all the way up and lower the brush size. I'm also going to lower the opacity of the line drawing so that I can see my new lines more clearly. Make sure you are back on your empty layer before you start drawing. The resolution of this project is at 250 dpi. Fairly large so we can zoom in close and get real nice and clear fine lines. I like to keep the lines pretty fine for the area around the face. As I speed up the video, you will see that the goal is to follow the shape and direction that the hairs are going while laying in the values, that is, the dark and light areas and everything in between. The hairs on the face are shorter, so I mimic that with my strokes. Follow the contours of the face and pay close attention to the shapes that the dark areas make. Where the area is a little lighter, use lighter pressure keep using fine lines around the eyes, but as you get down to the cheek area where it is all black, feel free to use a larger brush size. Do not worry if your lines are not perfect or look too harsh. This is just the first layer. We will be using a blending brush in the next step. As you work your way around the image, use longer strokes following the pattern and shape the fur creates. If you are new to drawing, feel free to watch the entire time lapse of my drawing process before you start. Your posture, your arm, wrist and hand should be relaxed, especially your wrist and fingers. If you are holding in a lot of tension as you concentrate, your wrist and hand will be too stiff and you will have less control of your movements. Practice releasing some of that tension by drawing some large circles and loops. They don't have to be perfectly connected circles, just loose and free feeling. Pay close attention to very slight value changes. The cheek area has a lighter patch of some reflected light. Be sure to get the shape of this correct, as this is all we have to define the contours of the dog's face. If you use all the same pressure throughout, the dog's face will look too flat. As you get into the chest area and the lighter hair that is there, follow the shapes that the shadow areas make. The hair is curly, so keep your strokes long, using a loose wrist action to keep those curves looking smooth. Once you've completed the first step, go to your brush panel. Choose the wash brush. Keep the flow fairly low so that it doesn't blend too much, and set the size to a medium 85 or so. Now blend those harsh strokes keeping to the basic value areas. Follow your previous brush stroke directions to keep it looking consistent. Don't overblend, but it is okay if you smudge some dark into the light areas. The final step will fix this. out all the harsh lines, it is time for the next step. 
Add a new layer above the one you were just working on. Choose your basic pencil again and keep the same settings as before. You can hide the simple line drawing layer if you want by tapping the little eye icon in that layer's top left corner. We are basically doing the same as before, keeping to the shapes of the values and following the direction of the hairs with our brush strokes. This is the detail layer, so you want to be a little more careful with your strokes and pressure. If it is hard to see what you are doing, feel free to lower the opacity of the previous layer. I will do this so you can more easily see what I am doing. Once you have completed this pass, choose your wash brush again. With the same settings, blend it all with light pressure, mostly to get rid of the harshness of some of the lines and to blend it more thoroughly in the dark areas. Now for the final step. Tap on the top layer to open the layer options panel, then tap merge. This merges your two pencil layers together. You no longer need the simple line drawing. Now find the textured eraser in your brush panel. Size and opacity with light pressure should be set to something very low. This gives you that tapered brush stroke. The flow should be set to low, somewhere around 12%. Now set the brush size to something very low. We want very fine lines here. Start erasing out the white areas and the highlights, again following the direction of the hairs. If the value isn't bright white, use a very light pressure and only erase those areas partially. The goal here is to erase out all the lightest areas. This also adds the impression of depth as there are brighter hairs laying on top of darker ones. In some areas, the hair is actually the same color, but because they are more forward in the image, they are catching and reflecting more light. So don't be afraid to overlap some of your other strokes from earlier. Watch my time lapse first if you are not clear exactly how to do this.
When you get to the longer and curlier hairs on the chest, use relaxed, curving strokes. You want to follow the highlight shapes as they are in the photograph, but also notice the shapes and values that occurred naturally from your previous work. Having two separate pencil layers and blending them both separately created some interesting textures that you can't always predict. If you see an interesting shape and shadow or line that you like, and if it follows the natural look of the image overall, use your textured eraser to accentuate it a bit. The only areas where you want to use full pressure are the places where the light from the window is highlighting the white fur, the shininess of the wet nose, and the brightest reflections in the eyes. If you feel you've made a mistake or you don't like a particular area and you're too far along to use undo, go ahead and use the pencil and wash brushes to fix it. Once you are happy with the way it looks, and if you had changed the background layer to a different color, change it back to white. Now you are finished with the black and white pencil sketch. You can leave it like this, but I highly suggest continuing the tutorial to learn some fun and easy techniques for coloring it. Okay, now we are ready to do the second part of my pet, por pet portrait tutorial. And um, if you chose to do the easier option, you should have downloaded this image. It's hard to see because it has a transparent background. But you should have downloaded this from my Gumroad page. If you chose to do the harder option and do the drawing yourself, then you can open your own drawing and you should have downloaded just this line art drawing instead. But for the easier option, this is the part of the tutorial where we're going to talk about that. So then you want to open this. And now this is your finished drawing of the it's just the black and white pencil drawing. Now there's a few things we need to do before we can start colorizing it. Um, here's what it looks like with a white background. We want to turn that on and off. You might want that on to make things easier to see. Um, you can also change it to a different color to make it easier on the eyes. But I'm just going to keep it white because then the colors are the way we want them to be. It's easier to see. Okay, so when we, so we're going to want to make a solid background behind the dog, but not in, not this background that's in the picture. We want just behind the dog. So the easiest way to do that would be to choose the selection tool in the magic wand and then click anywhere outside the dog. But as you can see, it's not perfectly accurate because some of our lines were very light and it goes inside into areas we don't want to be selecting. We just want all of the outside around the dog selected. We could change the tolerance here and redo it. That helps quite a bit, but you still have, it's almost a little too much. So let's go somewhere in the middle and try it again. There, that's almost perfect. Almost. There's still a few areas where you can see here by under the nose and on top of the nose <laughs> and then in the chest area here. This is probably the closest we're going to get it. So there's just a few things we need to fix. So let's um, also bring up our photograph we, in our multitasking, multitasking and drag it over here. I already had it open once. Slide it so it's not... There we go. And you should be able to zoom in as much as you want. Now where we can see that it's going in a bit and selecting more than we want is probably the brightest area around the nose here. So what we want to do is turn off the selection and now if you're afraid to mess up your drawing you can add a layer on top. Choose your pencil in case you want to you know do it a couple times that way you're not interfering with the actual drawing and then once you feel like you've got it right, you can merge them together. So I'll do a separate one just to show you how that works. And you want to make sure your pencil isn't too big. That's probably good. I'll hit undo. And now I'm just going to kind of close off these areas around 
where it's going into and just make the lines a little bit darker. I'm not exactly sure where it's finding ways through. It's, you know, the pencil grain itself is sometimes the only reason it does that. Um, you can test it by selecting it again, but make sure, well, you probably can't do that yet because you have to merge the drawing, but I'll do that. So merge, don't do merge all, just merge. Otherwise the merge all adds to the background and we don't want that. Now we can do a test here. See, that's better here now. It's getting a little extra, but don't worry about that. It's going out, you know, up, because some of our lines are smudgy and it's including them. So don't worry about those areas. We just want to worry about, I mean, we could on this side go in and clean this up a little more, but I think we'll just leave that too. We can always do it later once we have our color in there. All right, the other big area is right down here. So it seems to be going in, well, probably down by the foot even. Okay, so we'll turn that off again. Go back to our pencil. You can either be on the drawing or make another layer again, whatever you feel comfortable doing. I'm just going to kind of outline this. I'm just going to trace it around here just to give it some kind of line to use as its guide. Some of these smudgy areas, it might be going through there. And you don't have to make it one big solid line. You can pick up your pencil where it gets darker. It should be fine there. So let's try it again. There. See? Simple. Not too hard. That's the way we want it. So we are going to choose inverse. And now everything behind the dog is selected. Now we're still on that layer and we want to keep the selection but not be selecting the dog itself anymore. So we add a new layer. We're going to drag this layer underneath the dog, the pencil drawing, and now our selection is actually on the blank layer. So let's pick a color we're going to want to, let's see, I like to do two to start with. You're not the brightest bright, not the you know lightest color, not complete darkest color. I mean, you could do the darkest color, but I don't usually use like the lightest color, which is kind of a white. You know, this dog isn't completely black and white. It is, but to our eyes it is, but reflected light and whatever's in the room, if it's outdoor light versus indoor light, different things like that will change the way the reflected light shines, especially a dog with black hair, you know, it kind of tends to have almost a silvery blue shine to it. And then the white hair, it's not actually bright white. I have a Border Collie and when she goes outside in the brand new snow, you can really see the difference. Snow has tends to be a little bit bluer in its color, I guess. And it's, it's a cooler, because it's cold, <laughs> it's a cooler tone. And the dog's hair, as white as it looks normally when she's out in the snow, it has a little bit more of a yellowy kind of cream color to it. So those are the colors we'll be using mainly. Because it's a drawing and not a perfect recreation of the photograph, we want to add some interest into the painting. Because, you know, if somebody wanted you to do a pet, wants you to do a pet portrait, they want it painted and they want it to look like an artist did it, not just a photograph. Otherwise, they would have just gotten a poster photo, you know, from a favorite photograph instead. The color I think we'll use here is we'll do the dark one first. Now, it will probably make the dog appear to disappear, but don't worry about that. So we want to pick the fill while we still have the selection tool on. And now we'll go find a color and I'm not going to choose black, black. I'm going to choose, I have a lot of colors already kind of in my palette. The more you paint, the more um, colors you'll probably add to here and you'll have your favorites. For dogs, for animals in general, you know, there's a warmth to them and I like to pick colors that are a little warmer than just the blues. The blues can be used for highlights and shadows and things, but I could go with this dark orange. I mean, it's so dark, it's like a really dark brown. 
but because the darkest darks are black here, those are a little cooler. So the brown would tend, you could use that on a dog with brown hair. So I think the dark purple here that I already have on here is the best choice. Now I think I want to go, we could go a little darker and bring this down just a little more. Can you even see that change here? Um, I'm going to leave it where it is here. You can match that. Go not quite to the black, but as close as you can get to it without making it black. So that's the color we're going to use. It's like a very, very dark plum. And there. Now it makes it very hard to see. So what we're going to do, let's do this part right now. I'm going to turn off the paint fill and this, we're going to leave the selection on for a second. But we're going to go to the dog and we can select that layers options and under blending set it from normal and go to overlay this is where the magic kind of happens for the colorizing we're not just colorizing underneath the pencil sketch we're actually this is now going to use the information from the pencil sketch the different values to help us paint underneath it and they'll come through it'll it'll basically make the pencil lines come through but now the darkest pencil lines will be more this purple color so now we'll choose that purple layer again we make sure you still have everything selected and add another layer and we will leave that one it popped up in the middle here we'll leave it above the purple layer and we're going to choose another color that is not the brightest highlight but something that almost is there. So let's see, I think we will choose this, what do we have in the darks? You want something that kind of is within the whole image so you don't have to, you know, erase it out completely in different areas. So if you look at the reflections on the black hair, there are some areas where it could almost be a cream color, you know, and it's blended in with the silvery blue. So we're going to, choose the lightest cream you can get and you can see here where I have this selected within the orange kind of not quite to the yellow but not quite all the way to the orange and then almost as white as you can get it without actually being completely white and now we're going to oh we want to make sure our fill is selected and then do and now we have the same thing now there's two different ways we could do this part you could choose to have the white underneath the dark, you know, so the cream underneath the purple, or leave it this way and erase out. So I think, I think we're gonna flip it around. I think I like it better. Now we're only doing um, these two colors to start with. So I think what we'll do is we will, you know, often your choice might be how much white there is, how much dark there is. Well, it's not really white, but how much of the light colors there are in your image versus, I mean, there are more light ones. So I think we'll put the purple above the cream. Then we're going to turn down the opacity of the purple so that you can see what you're doing. And that brings out the, the pencil drawing. And look, the more it, I start to, you know, almost all the way to zero here and make it disappear completely, Look at the interesting colors you get as it changes. As they mix those two colors with the information from the pencil because of overlay being on. It's, it's very interesting. So you can kind of choose where you like this. You know, you don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. So you choose what you like the best. Now obviously the darkest darks are going to get lighter as you do this, but you can always add more to them. I think I'm going to put it right about in the middle because I want that purple to still kind of show through about right here. Good. Now our next choice, I know I can find my textured eraser again and go to settings and I'm just going to go to advanced, probably leave it where I have it, but you might need to change something if you're still using it at whatever the default is. Here is the settings. I don't change them a lot from their defaults. If I do anything, I might change under nib 
maybe the texture. So I'm using this texture and no shape put on it. But then I, I pretty much leave everything. You know, unless you really want to change the look of the way it's going to paint on there. But this is just an eraser. So, but you can do this with all the brushes, which is really nice. A lot of choices. Okay. So we're going to leave that the way it is. Mostly what we care about is the flow and the size of the brush. So now what we're going to do, we're going to stay on the purple and we are going to erase out the lightest areas. Now, what I mean by the lightest areas, you see there's some sections here. If you look closely here at the dark areas under the white fur, those can stay the color that we already have it here. So right here and even down here, in some of these areas in here, those can stay, okay? We don't want to erase these out. Same with up here on the nose. Some of this is going to stay in there, okay? Because it is a good shadow color for the white hair, like that, okay? What will give it the depth is these areas here, as you can see in the photograph, they are uh, lighter than this area. So that's going to be our guide, all right? And if this is feeling overwhelming, don't worry. I'm just showing you how to look at the different value changes and how we're going to use our basic colors here to add the depth that we need in the hair, okay? So I'm going to delete this. We don't want that back to the purple, back to our eraser, Let's see what size I want. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. We want to make sure, yeah, we want the light pressure almost all the way down because it's hair. So we want it to have a thinner appearance as you move the brush and lift your hand a little bit, okay? So let me show you an example. Let's start right here. We're going to be erasing this out. And this is what is giving us some of the depth. Now I feel like it's still a bit hard. So I'm going to actually undo that all the way. The flow feels a little wrong. Opacity maybe too. Oh yeah, see this got moved. We're going to leave that down. We can make them match because I don't want, I want it to match what we're setting it over here with the quick setting tool. So yeah, so leave those down. Opacity too, we'll leave down with light pressure. And the size, yeah. Okay, so that should be better now. So now we're mostly controlling the flow with this here and we want it really low. Let's try again. So real light pressure and then feel it a bit heavier as you come around and then lift your brush so that you get a little bit more depth. I even want a little bit more than that. And we're just going to now do this pretty much all over the hair wherever you see that it's lighter, okay? So you can follow my example here.
Now, as you can see, especially in the nose area, it's kind of messy looking, right? So we're gonna take, I believe it's my wash brush, which is my favorite for blending. Here's the um, shape and the texture, which you can adjust if you want. And I'm just blending this around. I'm not gonna go too far into the dark because then you'll get way too much of this orange, unless you want that, I don't care. <laughs> it's part of, you know, what art is. You get to make some of your own choices too. And, but see, the pencil is, the details are still there. You're not blending those away. So that's why this is so forgiving. And that's what I'm fixing, is just, you know, where you can see these harsher lines of our paint, not of the pencil. So now we are at the point where we can start adding some cooler uh, colors to this so it doesn't look quite as brown. Uh, what you could also try doing is on the purple layer, let's just play around with the opacity and just see what we get. Yeah, see if we darken it, we get away from some of that brown. So I think I'm going to darken it just a little bit. And now even though it made some of the areas uh, here in the ear and everything darker than we might want it that's okay because we're gonna use another color so I put this at about 70 I think that looks a little bit better I think we'll add a layer above it like that and now we're going to pick that brush that would be the coarse watercolor brush now if some of these are not in the original basic set you might have to go looking for them a little bit um, the, the way you can find them and kind of what set they might belong to is look at the little band that they have. This one has that like string, like a gold wrap around it. These are all white. These are very simple. So, so, so try to find what that one looks like and try to see if there's others. See, I'm thinking it probably was from that original set because I'm not seeing anything that quite looks just like it. I've had this now for over a year, two years probably now, so I I don't really remember. So then you have some of these that look like they're made out of bamboo and those are from their own set. So I'm pretty sure like this one, this one, uh, these, these are all from the original basic set yeah because then this one also was and that kind of has the same look to it so even though it's a pencil so there uh, I'm going to just double check the settings make sure they're the way I want natural blend that's I always forget to mention this one um, a lot of times it'll be on standard as the default or synthetic paint you want natural blend and I got there from up here, this little drop down right here. Um, that's my favorite uh, blend mode for the brush. What's nice about it is when you leave this color on as you paint, it reacts with your pressure and that you can change if you want it lighter this up all the way. I usually like to keep this down too so it has more of a watercolor. Now even though you see your strokes, they blend together a lot nicer and a lot more like acrylic, wet acrylic paint in my opinion. And you know compared to if we put it to synthetic or standard, standard is kind of your standard you know, digital paint. This one doesn't See how when you, you pick up the brush and then you come back, you get that. Especially when you have the, and this opacity is up all the way, so it wasn't even that. But especially if you have the opacity lower, you really get that. And I hate that. I absolutely hate that. That was the one thing I didn't like about Procreate. Procreate is great. It's just that it didn't have a setting to fix this. And I spent so much time trying to find that. And I think they've actually added a setting it's called something else which I can't remember right now it's not called uh, natural blend 
called something different, but now it blends together more like the natural blend in this one. So that's, so I could go back and start using Procreate more and learn more about it again. Um, I'd have to relearn the program a little bit, but especially now that I have this new MacBook, I can record my desktop or, you know, the iPad, what I'm doing on the iPad so much better. And then for the time lapse, uh, videos that I'd like to make, I can just speed that up instead of using the built-in, which, you know, this one has a better one than, see there, I'm not going to turn it off. Um, that this one has a better one than the Procreate one, and I, I just like the, the speed and the clarity that you get with it. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. You know, once you get used to a certain software and you really like using it, you tend to stick with it, but... Yeah, I'll probably uh, also procreate is also I, I discovered last night that they've added a new animation function and I think it's um, onion skinning in a timeline or something. I didn't really look at it too much, but I saw that the option was in there. So and, and Sketchbook does have that, but not in the iPad version. So who knows, maybe they'll add it eventually. Um, it seems like a simple, you know, feature because the desktop version of Sketchbook does have it. And that one's also free, you know, so if you have a decent desktop computer and the only problem is you need some sort of a, to really be able to draw, you, you need a tablet of some kind. And if you have a newer computer, you can set up your iPad to use Sidecar with it. Um, now I tried Sidecar when I first got this computer just a couple weeks ago and it's okay. It'll work. I think I'll use it for Sketchbook, but for other programs, like I had trouble with Affinity, and Affinity is supposed to be built for it, but it was very laggy, but Sketchbook wasn't, so, and this is the desktop Sketchbook, but I was able to draw on my iPad and use it like a tablet. So, I mean, it, it's wor it works. It's not great. I still think, you know, for the features that you have in the iPad version of Sketchbook, I might as well just keep using that and if there's a feature or um, you know and the other nice thing about the desktop version is you can make your own brushes and you can uh, download new ones that other people have made for free you know like off of DeviantArt and other places and that's nice I mean you know if if you can't find a shape or a texture that you really want it's nice to be able to create your own um, but I have everything already set up in here that I've ever needed so far. And if I, now that, you know, I can use Sidecar if I want to, I can always just jump to that to fix something or add something. But then I think I'd go back to the iPad version anyway. Okay. We're going to use a very light kind of silvery blue. I do happen to have one. I have a couple in here. Let's see. I think we'll do one that's not too bright just yet. This one maybe is a little bit too dark. Um, so let's change this. I'm going to bring it up to about here. I think I'll keep where this is here so you can see it's right about there. Now if you don't want to pick your own colors, you know if you're kind of treating this like a, a fancy paint by number, I'm the numbers I guess I'm telling you what to use, um, or you know just following along and painting but you don't exactly want to use the colors I'm using there's also an, a fun way to pick colors here and these are the Copic based on the Copic markers that are professional markers that you can buy at um, art stores oh, this must be new I don't remember seeing this before the design and illustration choices that's interesting but you can also use these to get colors and these numbers coincide with actual markers which is kind of cool so if you're used to using those you know which ones are your favorites or whatever so I don't use those I just like to you know just like mixing paint find the one I want right about here Let's try that. That looks, you know, if you look at the picture, I'm looking at the area in the forehead. And that looks, uh, that looks like a good choice. Now we're going to probably go into the white in some areas too, just to 
cool this a bit. It's a bit too orangey or red now that we made the purple darker. So let's first start here. Now we're under, make sure you're under the overlay layer. Make sure your brush is not too big. And we're just gonna start, it's still pretty dark. See now it is mixing with the purple again. So what we might want to do, I'm gonna clear this, is just take some of the blue out of this one and kind of go this direction a little bit. Make it a little bit more silver. Let's try that. There, that's probably a little bit better. Yeah, that's definitely better because it, it will mix with what's underneath it and you don't want it to look too purpley, but I think it's cool when you can still see some of that, especially in the transitions. I think that's really neat. And that's kind of what you're going for, is a more painterly look. Different from just a photograph. Yeah, see, so even though this is a, this is a very um, powdery blue, almost gray color, it's adding a lot to this picture, I think. It looks more blue and more purple. And in a way, it almost gives us the illusion that it's white you know, with some reflected light in it. That's kind of the idea. So um, just like before, follow the shape, stay in the areas where you see this color. You can follow my lead here as much as you want to. going to take our blending wash brush here. I'm not going to change any of the settings from before. I tend to leave them pretty much where they're at. So we're going to lightly go over these areas first and just blend them out where they kind of, so they disappear a bit on their ends. 
but go over the whole thing just to make them a little more subtle. You don't want to erase them completely. You don't want to see how they kind of blend in then into the background. And especially when you see where your lines just ended, pull it down maybe a little bit so that they taper off in a more subtle way. Let's do the eyes. We're going to leave these layers here because it's not that intensive. Um, if you really want to, if you're sure you like the, where the purple is and you don't plan on changing its opacity anymore, you can merge the purple. I think I will. I'll merge this. So you choose the purple and it'll merge with anything underneath it. Um, you could do the blue one too if you really want to, but I'm going to hold off on that for now. So just the the purple and then hit merge and now it's merged with the yellow one underneath and now you can't really do anything to that except I mean you kind of can but it's it's not gonna be as easy and the colors will blend together a little different now if you had to go in there and fix something so I'm gonna choose the one we just created with the merge and hit plus because we did those highlights with the blue on the eyes and I want the brown tones to be underneath that. So let's get our paintbrush and pick our colors. We want a nice like ambery orange color. Let's see if I got one already. That would be good for the darker one. So you can see here where I have this. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. Maybe we don't want it quite as saturated. So right about in the middle. See where it is here? It's not perfectly orange. It's a little bit more toward red. Okay. And make sure my brush is small. You can zoom in as much as you need to. This is the darker section. So we're going to come in here and do pretty much all of the colored area of the eye. It's the curve of these reflections that really show you the curve of the eye. You can either stay on this layer if you feel comfortable or we can just you can make a new one it's up to you I'm going to lighten this up a bit make a little bit more saturated orange and come through here one more time on the very edge anywhere you see that bright orange almost here if you want to you can blend that out make sure you have a very small blending brush and then the last color is more this amber color. I should say it's a creamier. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. 
I think we'll do that one on a separate layer. That way it's not mixing with what's underneath as much. It still does quite a bit because of the purple that's in here. I'm gonna blend it. We want this and we want it very much less saturated because of what happens with the purple. I'm just gonna leave it there though and just sort of blend it all in and blend it in around the pupil area here too. We're gonna, yeah, we're definitely gonna go over this with, um, cause that purple layer is really making it stand out more than we want it to. And it's because of the reflection, it's kind of duller than that, so. But it's a good start, I'd say. Yeah, I think we're ready to blend these layers together and then start with some layers above it. So we can choose the first eye layer, merge it with the one underneath, and then choose that one, merge that, then choose the blue layer, and merge that. And now we are going to merge the pencil layer with all the color underneath. Ta-da! You don't see anything change, but now that's all it is. No more changes to that. So only do it if you feel comfortable and you don't want to fix anything. All right, we're finally down to our last few steps. What we're going to do now is add a new layer and we're going to leave that one above the other layer which is you know our merged layer and now we are going to go to our paintbrush our favorite paintbrush again and that's what it looks like you can leave all the settings those are the basic ones here's the advanced leave all of these as they were before. The only thing we're going to change, oh, and make sure that's on natural blend, the brush type right here, make sure that's natural blend. And the only thing we're going to change is the blending mode for this layer is going to be soft glow right here. So that should say that right here, okay? And I think the color we're going to choose, let's look at our picture here. I think we're gonna go back to that pale blue. I don't know if I saved it or not, which is no big deal. Let me just remake it. Go to that one. And I'm just gonna add, because we're not doing the over, we're not underneath the overlay anymore. I'm going to add a little more saturation into it here. So about in this area and here. Let's check the size of our brush. We don't want it too big, but not too small either. Not for this part anyway. So we're gonna start coming in here. We'll start with the face and start doing the lightest, brightest areas that you see. So we'll start there like this. I'm actually gonna make that a little bit bigger. Going to bring the flow down too.
I zoom in here, I love the different things that are happening because of the pencil underneath, or, you know, the pencil that was used to create the details. And then the painted parts here with the color being added. All the different little things that happen in here. I just, I really like the look of this technique. And now with me coming over it with the soft glow. Take your moment to sip your coffee or whatever your preferred drink is. If it's later in the day, maybe it's something stronger. A glass of wine, perhaps. Try not to spit on your iPad while you're talking. Okay. Blending brush, right here. There's your... I'm gonna leave it the same as before. I never change these. Once you find the settings you like, I'll leave them. We're gonna make it big, bigger. Let's see what we got here now. We're gonna blend in, especially around, special, especially, especially around the face here, where we don't want it quite this obvious here. We just want it to be a hint of these highlighted areas. So I've got the flow pretty low, about 20 or so. And I'm actually just kind of going over all of it, especially where it's darker underneath and so you really see the ends of those lines. I'm kind of blending those in the most. I 
think we're done blending the white. Now we are going to, I'm going to add, I already have a new layer for that little example I did, so I'm just going to use that, but you can add a new layer. Let's actually put it under the soft glow and get the paintbrush and we're going to use, what we want is this really light kind of amber yellow color that's in the eye because it's not quite that color right now. We still need that. And it needs to be not super saturated. I'm going to pick this and just darken it a little bit, like right about there. And now because we're, again, we're not using the overlay, so it's not like blending with what's underneath the way it was, this should just lay on top and be exactly the way, you know, the color. I'm going to make it smaller. Be the color we want there, see? You can even come back in here with some brown. I think I'm going to do that actually. I'm going to leave it on this layer too. I'm going to use, let's find one that I have already, but I don't want it too dark. I'll start with this one. So to get brown, for those of you who are new to all of this, you want to pick a color kind of in between the yellow and the orange. It gets more green the closer you get to yellow. And so you want a little more into the orange area. And then as you get darker and less saturated, the more, you know, the different types of browns you have here. So I want like there maybe. Yeah, eh, a little darker. I'm gonna actually drag this to here so I don't forget about it. Okay, I sometimes forget to save my colors. Now this is kind of in the transition between this orange and the black. And also a shadow in this area up above the reflected bits. And maybe a little bit in here just because those reflections aren't just one solid color. And then here, the more you add, you know, to the eyes and the reflections and things, the more realistic they'll start to become. Uh, we need a little bit more of a light color in there too because there's some more reflecting going on over the pupil area. So then blend all this on both eyes. I'm going to go back and get that lighter color again and just very lightly go into the pupil area a bit and just some shapes in there and then we're gonna blend them back out make sure your blending brush is small we don't want them overpowering the dark of the pupil there so all right let's see here what can we change I think we want a little more dark so we're gonna be doing the dark we can stay on this layer I'm going to go up here my favorite pencil in Sketchbook is actually the regular basic pencil that it comes with, the primary pencil. I'm going to go pick black. I always try to keep a white and a black somewhere in my palette so I don't have to find it, but it's obviously easy enough to make, no matter what color you're on. Um, so I'm going to 
color in around the eye here and just get the really dark of the pupil here and just make the eyes a little bit and the reflections around them a little sharper. Before we move on, we're going to stay on this layer, but I'm going to switch over to the wash brush. I'm going to make it very small. I'm just going to blend in those pencil lines we just made just to soften them a bit because they're grainier. If you make it too small, it won't really show up, so I'm just blending these a bit. There, and by putting that lighter orange in there, it, it made the orange a little more subtle. It was just a little bit too bright before. Okay, we're gonna go stay on this layer, go back to this pencil. Let's look at the nose. Okay, I found what works pretty decent here for these dots. So what I did was I used the primary pencil and the uh, texture that it uses. I turned off shape, made sure that was off. I made the scale much higher and the contrast much higher and the spacing I brought up too just to try to keep that and then made sure the size with the heavy pressure and all of that was up pretty high, but then I still had to adjust the size again anyway because it was kind of too big. So there. Then I painted in where I needed it. Now it's a little dark in some spots. I also erased out the soft glow there because it was, uh, because I was painting underneath it, it was still looking way, it wasn't dark enough there. So. I erased that out and now we're going to put it back in. So let's go now back to the soft glow. Uh, the pencil, if you're done with it, you can reset it, but I'm going to leave it in case I got to fix any of it. Um, I'm going to use the paintbrush. I'm going to go back and pick. I don't think I saved the color, did I? Um, the light blue. And then soft glow layer again and now we're going to keep a small brush and just kind of use the shapes that are there now from that pencil being the scale of it being changed follow the shape that you see in the photograph I'm going to just start to blend this out with my wash brush just to make sure I like how it looks before we move on and this will make the dots a little more subtle I'm not using a lot of pressure if you want to come back with the paintbrush and just put some of them back again if you do it too much make sure it's not too big and that worked out like that pretty good with the pencil and changing the scale of its texture that it already has on it now we're going to go back to that pencil go back to the layer we created for it i made it on a separate layer so i didn't have to mess up anything else underneath um this time i'm going to hit reset Put it all back the way I like it. We're going to choose the dark, dark, dark purple again. And now this area, we're going to just sort of draw on these pencil lines in here a little bit. Don't want to blend them out too much, but I'm just blending the tops a bit and just so they're hinted at here, their shape. I mean, you can kind of see how they're in the photograph. Now we're going to go back to the soft glow and our paintbrush. Oops. Make sure we have the right color. Go back to our light blue color and fix this area here.
All right, now when we zoom out, it looks a lot better. Yay. Okay, next is a boring part. Gotta admit, okay, but before we do that, we're going to choose the one where the layer with the eyes on it and we're gonna hit merge and that goes down to the nose one that we just fixed. And now we're gonna do it again. And now that's merged with the whole picture, soft glow, we are leaving. Before we continue, first we are going to create a dark background. Now make a new layer and drag it under the dog layer. Now pick the fill tool and pick a dark color. I'm going to use dark blue. Now it's time to clean up our edges. Find the cashmere eraser. You want the size with pressure to be really low, but you should have the opacity all the way up on both. Basically, we have to erase everything but the fine hairs around the whole image. Go ahead and hide that dark background layer to make some of the darker hairs easier to see. Find the synthetic bristle round brush. Looks like a messy spiky brush with a silver handle. As usual, make the size with light pressure very small and change the brush type to smudge. Now we need to mimic tiny hairs to make what we just erased look more natural. Pull the brush away from the paint. It looks like you're smearing or dragging a tiny amount of paint away from the rest of the image. Follow the basic direction the hairs are already going. Don't deviate too much. Basically, we are smoothing out the cutout shape and blending it into the background better so it doesn't look like you took out a scissors and cut out a picture of a dog and pasted it on a black background. Now use the cashmere eraser again and carefully erase that outline across the top of the head. This had been created from that lighter highlight layer we had made at the very beginning. Find our favorite watercolor brush again and choose a color that is very light but not a bright white, something that will blend in with the light and dark hairs. This desaturated orange is perfect. It's basically a beige color. On a new layer, use this with a very small brush size to add a few more hairs back over our cutout edge, anywhere you feel it needs it. Now make a new layer and drag it above everything else. Change its blend mode to soft glow. Start adding those whiskers with loose wrist and finger movements. Lift up the brush as you get to the ends. Sometimes drawing the longer ones faster helps keep them smooth. But if you are still having trouble, use the predictive stroke tool at the top to help keep your lines smooth. Follow the pattern of whiskers in the photo, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same, as long as you keep them as close to realistic as possible. Okay, you're now pretty much finished with this picture. Uh, you'll want to sign your name to it. I have a way that I do it. To get to navigate through your gallery to other folders, I get a lot of questions related to this. Up here is, un this folder is not titled, so it just says untitled. And you go there, and then you have access to all your other uh, folders that you can create. And you can hit the plus button if you want to make a new one or you can trash some of them. I'm going to open this one because I saved my signature thingy in it and I'm going to click on that, hit copy. So if you want to make kind of a fancy way of signing your name for your pictures you can do that and just make sure it's on a transparent layer and I then will go back here, go back to where my doggy picture is, 
open that. And I'm just going to add a new layer and click on there and hit paste. And there it is right in the middle. And I'm just going to make it a little bit larger. Um, I want to bring this down. There we go. And now I can get this right where I want it. Probably right there. And then you can apply white pencil. I think I'll leave it this really bright blue. And I'm going to zoom in. Put the year. We need that much smaller. I think I'll go with white too because this is white. I'm gonna keep it matching. Practice your fancy lettering. 28, 2020 is over. Doesn't really feel like it yet though, does it? Right, 2021. Okay, and then now you could play around with different backgrounds if you want. I like the darker background, but you could also, I'll just new, do a new layer, and, you know, so I don't change anything about the other one. You could try gradients, and those are kind of fun, uh, so I'll show you how that works real quick. By the way, if you need any tips on, on how to use Sketchbook and some of the quirks that it might have and, to, you know, how to utilize its tools to the best effect, um, I do have the quick tips, some quick tip videos and also a longer one. There we go. Here is our, so you just draw this the direction you want the gradient to go. And you can grab any one of these little dots to change how dark you can change the colors but you can also change where they're positioned you can also add new ones if you want I'm going to change the colors here it just starts off with basic gray so I want oops I don't want blue um, let's start with our dark blue actually that's kind of nice I think I'm going to leave that the same dark blue that's near the bottom. I'm going to move this. Move these two closer together because I don't think I really want that second one. But You can just make it the same color as the bottom one if you want. This one, I want to also make that blue. There we go. And these two, let's see here. You can play around with something that's kind of fun, maybe a little bit too bright, so let's darken it. It can get a little laggy when you're doing the, um, yeah, let's take out some of the, extra saturation. Just kind of bring that up here and let's see this one maybe and it gives you a little bit of depth to the background too let's see here even with something just as simple as a gradient you don't need to literally recreate the whole background that you see in pictures unless you know you're doing this for somebody else and they ask for it oh that's kind of neat that's neat I'll do that bring it down Let's turn this off for a second. I think I want to move these up a little bit. There we go. You know, you can be as creative as you want to be and just play around with it. Yeah, I'm trying to decide if I want this one to stay this color. What happens if I turn that one dark? Nah, I want it lighter. Still want it towards the blue though. 
Hmm. Do I like that? That could be interesting. Bring it down a little bit. They blend together usually really nice. I kind of want it lighter where the ear is so that you don't have quite as harsh a contrast between the ear and the background. There, I'll just leave it at that. That's good. And there you go. Now we need to put all these layers together. So the first one I'm going to do is, I mean this one we can just delete, we're not even using it anymore. This one has where we drew in some of the extra fur here. So we'll first, we're going to blend the dog one with the one underneath. And then we're going to blend, we're going to merge that, I'm sorry, with the um, background layer like that. Now you can't change it anymore unless you undo at this point, but if you quit the program, you're, it's done. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to do the soft glow layer now on top of these. I always do the soft glow layers last just because sometimes it doesn't read the information underneath and you lose that glow effect if it's if a line or some of that soft glow color is like it might be here with some of our whiskers if it goes past the uh, actual background of the painting of the dog painting the figure painting merge that we could have hit merged all but I don't know if that always works with that soft glow so I always do it in order like that it's kind of finicky that way so I also have a quick tip about that it may sound like a strange thing like why does it matter that the you know the order you merge your layers in but it kind of does with this program so there you go the picture is complete there you go. All done. Now you can yeah, stick your name on that and show everybody what you did. Uh, let me know if this was uh, fun for you, especially the, um, the easy version. This is the first time I'm trying something like that for people of any uh, skill level. So hopefully it was easy for you to follow. So let me know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.